Right to a channel of light fluid. Welcome to 2022 on the channel. So I hope you had a good New Year's Eve or New Year's Day, depending on where you've been and exactly when you're watching this. And uh, we had some good times between Christmas and New Year. I will send you a link in the description. Of course, I got together with my friends, Doug the Red Panda and Fallen Wolf, for a quick smoke room Christmas special. It was a lot of fun to do, so I'll send you the links and you should check out their channels and subscribe to them as well. So anyway, we're going to start off the new year with Steadfast here by Drakes and Grunt Steel. This is just a one-off video. I played it before and it's really good. I enjoyed it. I think it fits well with uh, this channel. I don't have too much more to say about this, so let's just start it up. rising with the sun and getting up as it greets me good morning I always think the view is romantic despite how tired I feel is that why people call me a poet but how can people not think it to be inspiring the view shifting from the stars and turning into day the sun then gives us warmth and wakes us it's like a parent up there. Ever caring. It's easy to miss them when they're not around. It's been a while now, but I still feel lonely when I wake up. Is this what coming of age is like? Although probably not so abrupt usually. At least there's the sun to warm my heart. Maybe I should stop these thoughts? Poetry won't get me anywhere, will it? Especially with these thoughts of mine. I'd better leave those thoughts for later and start moving. I have a lot of wares I need to sell today. The farm won't keep itself going. Finn starts making his way towards the gated fortress in the distance, calm and collected. One step at a time. Under the gentle warm morning light, the serene atmosphere makes him feel as if he's all alone. His own mind being his only companion. It's like the whole world is still asleep. And there he is. Just like every day. Standing strong, ever vigilant. You would think the city guard keeping lookout for hours on end might be tired. Leaning back lazily against the city wall or dozing off without a care. But no, not he. Instead, he's there, ever vigilant. An unwavering bastion keeping us safe. A shield. Like an unreachable peak, the top never to be reached. At least, not for someone like me. I can never hope to reach someone like him. I smile at him as I pass the gate. No words are spoken, but he greets me with a curt nod. Passing each other by, no words of greeting. Just a smile and a nod, like every day in these past few years. As if he's noticing my existence, but nothing more. That nod, every single time. Why does he do that? 
Does he not know what he is doing to me? How my heart suddenly calls out in happiness the moment his eyes land on mine. Just to be drowned out in the deafening silence thy force upon myself. <sighs> How I want to scream out loud in the endless skies. Tell the world what I want, what I need. And tell him. How my heart then bleeds endlessly. The sinking feeling I get when his eyes make me realise that I will never be close to him. Not in this world. Huh. There is no way he would ever know. He's too steady. Too strong. That deep blue eye of his betrays it far too well. And the emotion he hides behind that silver eye of his. His powerful presence. And that hidden sadness. The pain he hides inside. At first, he looks unemotional in a way. Unwavering, a stalwart protector. Steadfast. Like a pillar supporting the entire world. Holding us up on his powerful shoulders. Keeping everything in place. Keeping everyone safe. That's... That's what he is. But as you look into his eyes, there is more. I only wish you would tell me. Tell me who he really is. <sighs> the unmoving protector, huh? Unwavering. Undeniable. Unobtainable and unreachable. <sighs> why am I so hopeless? If it can never be, why do I want it so? Why does my heart yearn for that which it can never have? Is it inspiration? Or is it simple foolishness? Am I the frog at the bottom of the well? Reaching for that one bit of sunlight leaking through from above? The ray of light that brightens my entire world. Adding colour to the mundanes. Hopeless frog, you'll never be able to jump out of the well. It shelters you, stay safe and lonely. Is that why I yearn? Is he my one ray of sunlight? A spark of light in an abyss of darkness. I'm hopeless. Like always. Yeah. Maybe one day I'll be brave enough to approach him. Maybe we can be friends. And then... I'll settle these wild emotions of mine. Why do I do that? Why do I greet him with such dark, cold eyes? And why does he do that? Why does he smile at me when he passes? That blinding smile, bright like the morning sunlight. Rising and banishing the darkness inside. Ah. Does he know what he does to me? How brightly he shines, and how it pains me, like daggers slowly being pushed into my heart, 
to see him shine so bright. To see him look at me with such hopeful eyes. To see him look at someone as wicked as me. I don't deserve his smile. He's unreachable. So why does he torture me so? Is he a demon sent to punish me for my sins? No. He is an angel. And that is why I can never reach his light. Someone as wicked as me belongs in the shadows. But, if this is how I am to be punished for my sins, I'd rather be tortured. <sighs> Instead, I see his eyes, his smile, every day, a glint of hope, the promise of a dream. I want it. I want him. But I may never have him. My soul is by the shadow reaching for the sunlight. Only to disappear as it gets close, as the sun is too bright. On wings of wax do I try to fly close to the sun? Like a moth to a flame. No, the flame will burn me, it is not the place for me, I am far too wicked. The wicked deserve loneliness, that is my fate, but maybe I will try. Try to at least smile when he smiles at me. If not for me, then for him. He deserves it. Because he is what I am not. Even if I get burned. Maybe then I will see what he's like. And maybe that will break the illusion. And dim the sunlight. Is it time to let my shadow grow? Well, I should just smile. Smile. Meanwhile, Finn makes his way into the city. He sets up his stall, placing his wares with experience. Bread at the front, flour on the back. Fresh wares grab the most attention, after all. Steadfast stands guard at the city entrance, like always, far away from view. Why today seem to pass faster than other days? It's like my insides run, and this time outside speeds up. I live to compensate for these turbulent feelings of mine. This is not like me. The voice behind him wakes him from his daydream. You alright there, Steadfast? Well, I'm alright, Sebastian. I haven't seen you this distracted. There's a look in your eyes that I don't recognise. He raises an eyebrow at Steadfast. I'll take a break. I owe you more than one. A break? Uh, that's unusual. Oh, what's the occasion, Sebastian? The other guardsman does not respond at first. You look more sad than usual. Am I that easy to read today? You're sad? Where is that damn smile? Is that a genuine offer, or are you simply seeing what my response would be? 
I'm sorry for you to take a break, you know. Well, I usually don't need them. That is true. Usually. Steadfast lets out a soft sigh. Well, I'll take your offer. I always figured you'd say no. I'm glad. You need it today. Relax once in a while. Oh, thanks. The steadfast leaves his post, the other guardsman takes over. For steadfast as if the flow of time returns to normal. That's unusual. But he's not wrong. A break, was it? Maybe I'll go see how Finn is doing. Could I? Or to buy some bread? That's it. To buy some bread. Steadfast makes his way towards the city market, where Finn has his stall set up. There he is. He knows he has a long day ahead of him, and yet he always smiles. So brightly, so softly. How does he do it? That damn smile. My heart melts. Does he not know what he does to me? Time to... To... To buy some bread. Steadfast? He hasn't come by my stall in years. I wonder what the occasion is. Uh, good morning. Uh, bread. Bread? <coughs> oh, I'd like to buy some bread. Oh. Oh, of course. How much is it? He still has that sad look in his eyes. I wish he'd look at me differently. Even if his eyes were to show anger. Or hate. Show in the fire that is sure to live inside him. Burn in passion, incinerate in anger. Anything. But... I don't think he hates anyone. I wish you would tell me. Tell me about your thoughts, Steadfast. The ones hidden behind those sad eyes of yours. What weighs you down, Steadfast? Finn hands Steadfast a loaf of bread. Here. You can have it. It'll go bad if nobody eats it soon. It is a white lie. For some reason, I can't bring myself to ask for payment. Not from him. Not after. Well, it's been a while since we last talked, hasn't it? It has. You can come by any time you want, Steadfast. I can't tell him, but I miss that. I miss... him. You should come by again, tomorrow. Maybe you could help me write a poem? Hear yeah, those sad eyes again. I... I don't think that's wise. A wicked man, was it? How about just for today? 
I don't care about being wicked or not. Stradvast falls quiet for a second, his breath steady as he looks off into the distance. Then... How about you show me one of your poems? One of those? I haven't written any in a while. Ah. Uh, Alright. There's a moment of silence filling the void, as the two stand idle, each of them lost in their own thoughts. Next to each other, but feeling ever distant. I wish I could just ask him what this feeling is. Maybe... Finn looks up towards the sombre guard. Steadfast, do you... A smile bright as a sunlit sky. Warm like the flames burning in my heart. Asking me to reach for them. But I cannot... For I am but a moth drawn to the flame, a shadow nurtured by the flame. Alas, if I get too close I will fade away. Thus I watch from a distance. A man with a hidden name can never touch. I never feel. Whoa. That's better than anything I could ever write. Why did you start with poetry? Well, it's about... Uh, just now. Is this what they mean when they say poetry is supposed to come from the heart? Between the two of us, you were the poet all along. Well, I can never hope to be as good as you. I think you might just be better. You always were. I... Oh, I didn't write this. You did. What? With trembling hands, steadfast bids his thanks. Heading off with a sigh under his breath, his tail hanging low. Well, thank you for the bread. As the guard leaves, Finn can't help but think back. Did he mean that I was his muse? The day passes like any other day. Things get sold, conversations come and go as people pass by. As the sun starts to set and the time to head back home draws an eye, Finn cannot help but to think of one in particular. I wonder what he's doing right now. Perhaps. As Finn leaves the city and starts the journey back to his farm, the other guardsman is still the one keeping guard. Steadfast is nowhere to be seen. Why am I disappointed that he's not the one watching the gate? Maybe I'm simply used to it. At least now I don't have to think about those eyes. Those sad, sad eyes. Once again, rising with the sun. Once again alone with a romantic view of the sunlight. Slowly pulling the blanket of darkness from the world, replacing it with its warmth. Ever caring, like a caring parent, was it? The farmer sighs. It's hard to know what loneliness is. It already has you in its grasp. Is that why I yearn for a touch? Is that why I yearn for what's hidden behind those eyes? And why the way he looks at me tears at my heart? 
Why am I always like this? Always too many thoughts, too many questions. Time to push them aside and get up. Today is a new day and there's work to be done. Once more, Finn makes his way towards the gated fortress in the distance. One step at a time, the sun slowly rising as if keeping him company along the way. And once again, the sun being his only companion, warm in his back as he walks. And nobody up and going but the guards, as usual. And there he is, like always. Ever so strong. A powerful, emotionless guardian. Keeping the world safe. And there are those sad eyes. I wish I could replace that sad look in his eyes. Fix it. Give him a happy smile to suit his handsome, rugged face. But that's not how he feels, is it? Like a moth drawn to the flame. Flying on wings of wax. Only to be burned by the flame if he gets too close. Like a shadow which fades if he tries to reach for the light. That is why he stays away. Does he truly think that way? What is that light he speaks of? I wish I knew. As Finn approaches the gate, he smiles at Steadfast in a greeting. Once again, a simple nod. Nothing more. Nothing less. And those sad eyes. Why does it feel like there are so many unspoken words? I think too much. The farmer continues and once again sets his stall up to sell his wares like usual. Top of the morning to you, Finn. How's the wheat been treating you? Why did you have to be in the city today out of all days? Uh, good morning, Robert. Uh, life is good. How are you doing? I got a good hunting. I've been staying around for a while. You should come see me, Finn. Your father was a good friend, you know. I'll try. Maybe we could catch up for a bit after I'm done here. The man falls silent for a second. There's a storm on the horizon. He gets a dark look on his face. What? Storm clouds on the horizon. Bandits in the woods and nearby wildlife's acted up. As if the world is at unrest. Silence falls once more. Be careful out there, Robert. The man smiles at Finn. You yeah, needn't worry about me. However, I need to worry about you, Finn. Your father would kill me if we were here and thought I wasn't looking out for you. This world is a dangerous place. Is it not a good time you find a wife and move to the city? I don't know if that's what life has in store for me, Robert. It's like you can't read or write. I've seen your stories and poems. And your little woodcraft will make you a reasonable living, wife or no wife. The man nods to a small set of wooden figurines and tools laid out for display. Silence falls yet again, until Finn lets out a soft sigh. I do as you wish. I just wish you'd stay safe within the city walls. I know you want what's best for me, Robert. The farmer sighs again. And I thank you for it. I just need to know if that's what life has in store for me. It's the man's turn to sigh. Your father talked to you about this, didn't he? It's a lofty dream to live like that. Someone will kill you just for being that way. Follow your roots and find a wife. You don't even need to love her, just wife her. Write her an empty poem, tell her you care for her. I don't think I'll ever do that, Robert. I'll be fine on my own for just a while longer. 
All right, you're right, I get you. I'll just stop bugging you about it. Now, how about you sell me some roast chicken and a few potatoes? The day continues, Finn selling most of his wares. Business is good. Most people seem to be stocking up. It looks like nobody wants to leave the city for a while. It's going to be a busy day. But now, for a short break. I need a nap. I wonder if Steadfast will come by today as well. Like he used to do. They should have been back already. Uh, I'll just take a seat while I wait. Maybe I'll write a poem. Sheila would probably like that. She always pushes me to continue, but she's wrong about making a living out of it. Hmm. Like the stars above on a cool summer night. Not quite right. Like the stars above, illuminating the cold, dark night. Contrast in the darkness. Uh. It's all early for the stars. You don't have to see them to imagine and feel them. But... To the sky above, wide and free. Like the clouds floating softly as in a sea. Their actions mimic my emotions. At times wild and free, contrasting with soft and slow. Happily floating to where they need to be. Under the sun which brings light to the world and nourishes my emotions. That's very fitting on a day like this, Finn. Oh, she'll like that one. You think so? It's unpolished. And just like the sun, the sky houses stars above. On a cool summer night, I yearn for the light they bring, and the stories of quiet freedom they whisper to me. I'm not sure about that second part yet. What do you think, Steadfast? Oh, I'm no poet. He thinks for a second. Oh, something with a plant or a flower. A flower? Oh, it's an ode to the summer sky, is it not? The sun brings light. The light makes the flowers blossom. Just like your poem is meant to bring emotions to people hearing it. The sun brings life to the flowers. Silence falls for a second. That's a poem in itself, Steadfast. The guard chuckles softly. I think so. <laughs> Maybe I should try and write one like you someday. You should try it. You're good at it. Ah, that's your poem, inspired by what you just said. Oh, I didn't do anything. Can't write or think of my own stuff. But you definitely got the art in you, Steadfast. You're not just brawn, there's more to you than meets the eye. Oh, you think so? Doesn't everyone? Oh, you give me too much credit, Finn. I'm a wicked man, not good for anything but keeping watch. Wicked? Well, I don't think so. The guard softly sighs. You're innocent. It makes me happy to know people like you exist. Finn. Don't let anyone change you, all right? And if they try, let me know and I'll deal with them. They both fall silent for a little bit. Oh, I'll wait with you. How did you know I was waiting? Oh, it's my job. Thanks. 
Okay, steadfast. How did you lose your eye? There is a pause before the guard responds to the question. Remember what I said about innocence? I lost my innocence. You lost your innocence? I am a wicked man and I had wicked thoughts. He sighs softly. In this world there are people who will want to control you. And if they know you have such thoughts, they'll want to harm you. An eye for an eye. You look at that which you should not, it is the price to be paid. I took a new name and a new path. A new purpose to rid myself of those wicked ideas. He sighs again. You have good people around you. You need not worry about such things. And if someone wants to hurt you, I'll protect you. I thought you'd lost in a fight. But... Uh, but... You're too strong for that. You think too highly of me. Well, I've lost many fights. I've done many bad things to win others. Well, I don't think I could fight as you do. Not even to keep someone safe. Well, that's fine. I'll be wicked and that's enough for everyone here. I still don't think you're wicked. Silence falls for a minute as they wait together. Hey, Steadfast. Why didn't you fight the people who did this to you? You're not wicked, so they must have been wrong. Steadfast looks surprised for a moment, then his face turns dark. I might have fight the world to cut them all down. No. If I am to be the villain, I'd rather be the villain of my own story, not everyone else's. Do you know villain? If only you knew. Now, about that poem, how did it go again? To be the hero or the villain of your own story, huh? I'm not that innocent anymore, am I? I think I finally understand what he meant. All these thoughts. What I want, who I want and why I want them. These are thoughts I shouldn't have and I know it. Everyone knows it. Maybe that's why he doesn't look at me. Why am I thinking about him again? His handsome face, his powerful body. I want to touch him, to hold him, to pull him into my arms and have him be mine. And to be his. To have him kiss me. That makes me wicked, doesn't it? But... Is that so bad? Is it because I'm weak? Just a frog at the bottom of the well, looking for that ray of sun shining down from the top. If I was strong, like him, then I could do it. The farmer packs up the remainder of his wares, easy enough to put in his rucksack. Today was quite a good day for business. I wonder if it's because of the coming storm. A coming storm. Did he mean a figurative or a literal one? <sighs> There's unrest in the area, yet my mind is focused on one thing. One man. I truly am wicked. The things I want to do. 
how I want to touch him, how I want to hold him, how I want to kiss him, and just how much I want to. Maybe I could just fight the world for it. Or maybe and just not care for what the world thinks. Hopeless. Like a shadow that reaches for the sun. I thought these thoughts were to be gone. Vanish into the abyss of my dreams. Never to surface again. All it took was one look at his face. A damned smile. That's where the trouble starts, isn't it? A damn smile. The guardsman sighs. Oh, I want to kiss him. When I look at him, all the darkness I've given into fades. All the evil disappears. The blood on my hands washed away in seconds. Only to reappear when he leaves. Is this what being a shadow is? Always following behind, yearning for the sunlight, but never able to reach it. I wonder, what would happen if my shadow was to disappear? The guard catches a glimpse of something in the distance. I'm coming storm in more than one sense by the look of it. The sound of loud thunder in the distance confirms his thoughts. Will he be safe? What's wrong with me today? I shouldn't be thinking of him. The city will be safe, I'll make sure of it. As another blast of thunder echoes in the distance, the guards slowly observe the crowd making their way into the city, keeping alert of anything suspicious. Before long, most of the citizens have made it inside the city gates. There's a few stragglers left. Looks like most everyone is staying inside city limits over the night. The guard looks up to the sky once more. But it's calm. Another crack of thunder strikes in the distance. Truly the calm before the storm. The sky in the distance roars wildly. Just like these emotions of mine. Turbulent but out of reach. No matter how much I struggle I cannot reach them and fix them. The last few people making in the city gate, his gaze wanders, slowly looking over their faces. A few other guards he recognises, a hunter or two. People who can take care of themselves, even if they know being on their own in the coming storm is a bad idea. And then... He's going back home? He's going out there? On his own? The guard can feel himself wanting to stop the man walking past him. His body wants him to move. His soul wants him to move. His feelings want him to move. But his brain tells him not to move. Is he here to torture me again? No, he wouldn't. It's easy to think that my demon has come to torture me. But he is an angel, and the demon is inside me. The farmer smiles towards the guards he passes. Once again he responds with but a nod. It feels like my soul is screaming, tearing my insides. For me to grab him, tell him not to go into the storm. And would instead stay by me in the night. But 
I cannot. It will never be. Stay safe in the night, Sir Steadfast. Why can't I bring myself to respond? He's come to not even expect a response. That damn smile. And how he looks, walking away from me. Maybe. Just this once. Stay safe. I will. That was two times in just two days that the farmer had heard Stetsvat's voice in a long time. He could not help but think, does he not hate me? Well, maybe tomorrow I'll try and talk to him again. The farmer continues moving on the road out of the city, lost in thought, a figure approaches. A man is stumbling back and forth across the street as he tries to make his way into the city. A drunkard, uh, this time? Time but slows down for the guard as he sees everything unfold in front of him. The drunkard moves towards the farmer and steadies himself on the young man. It's like his body moves on his own. Steadfast can feel his left hand reaching for the handle of his sword. For a simple drunkard? I'm not myself when he's around. Steadfast sighs and relaxes his body. You all right over there? Yeah, I'm just talking to the pretty one over here. Man, your own business. Ignoring the drunkard, Steadfast speaks directly to Finn. Are you all right? Pretty boy's all right. Aren't you? He's too good for your grimy hands. Too pure. Maybe that's why he's not saying much. But I, I am already a villain, a wicked man. I was asking my friend here. I'm all right. Steadfast turns towards the drunkard once more. Let go of him. You ask it to you anyway. The drunkard waves steadfast off and turns to Finn. How about it, boy? Ten coins, you show me what that pretty mouth of yours can do. Why does this make me so angry? I'm supposed to be calm, collected, a stalwart guardian. That is my duty. So why does this make me furious? Stedvast clears his throat and speaks with a deep, authoritative voice. Hey! You should head back into the city. It is not safe here outside city limits tonight. Farm or no farm? Good. Get in, show me a good time, boy. The drunkard puts his hand on Finn's shoulder and pulls him closer. As from reflex, Finn takes a step back. I'm not that kind of man. For some reason, steadfast heart sinks. Is this how wicked I am? Like this drunkard? Not good enough for ya. I can see that perverted boy from miles away. If you're not going to be of use, then you're just like an unwed woman. Finn opens his mouth to respond. Before he can speak, the drunkard strikes him with an open fist right across the face. The drunkard takes a step forwards towards Finn and raises his fist once more. Before he can land the strike, Steadfast catches his hand. Gary, come in with me. Steadfast takes a step back as the hit lands on his chin. He spits, a glob of blood landing on the road. The silence is palpable, even the drunkard pauses. So in a bout of panic, the drunkard lunges towards Finn. For he can think Steadfast's arm is moving on its own. (laughs) 
The drunkard falls over as if in slow motion. Steadfast stands there, holding his arm up straight or his punch ended. It is as if his time was frozen. The drunkard barely makes a sound other than the thud when he hits the ground. Nobody says anything. Why did Steadfast do that? The man didn't deserve that. He was not thinking straight. Is this what Steadfast means with him being wicked? But he did it to protect me, did he not? Is that so wicked then? I wish I could understand. Then I would know why he looks at me like that. With that hunger and that sadness. Is he... is he all right? The drunkard seems to be out cold. That's the first thing you ask. The guard sighs. He'll be all right. A moment of silence once more, as they stand and ponder the moment, each on their own. I think I finally understand what you meant back then. The guard raises an eyebrow at the question. What being wicked is? The drunkard, he's a bad man, but no, oh, not like that. No, I am wicked. I understand it now. The guard raises his eyebrow once more, this time with a doubtful expression on his face. You're not wicked. How could you know? These things going on in my head? If only he knew, he wouldn't look at me, not ever again. The guard lets out a sigh. At the very least, you're not as wicked as I am, or as him. He nudges the passed out drunkard with his foot. How could you know who I've been coming the years since we used to talk? The guard sighs again. Hey. I am a guard, a watchman. It's my job to observe and keep the city safe. There's no response. If I had my sins, nothing about you is wicked. The farmer still does not respond. There's a look on his face that betrays his conflicted emotions, how he does not know what to say. The guard sighs again. You should stay in the city tonight. There is a storm coming. I cannot. Why not? It is not safe. The farm will be there tomorrow. The farmer does not respond right away. Because my home is all I have left. If there are bandits in the area, I'll protect it. Now it's steadfast turn to stay silent, that he does not have the words to respond. Finn. Please. He said my name? I've heard it a million times before from others, but when he says it, my soul trembles. The way his voice plays the strings of the instrument lifts my heart. The look in his eyes is different. There's a glimpse of warmth hidden behind that steely blue gaze. The sadness is still there, but it's not the same sadness. Does he know what he does to me when he looks at me like that? I... I cannot... Stay safe, Steadfast. Steadfast watches Finn slowly make his way out of the city towards the coming storm. I want to tell him, but how could I? I want to tell him about my feelings, about all of my sins. But again, as I try, I am left on my own. Once again. I should never have talked to him. Finn is an angel after all. While I am but a demon, a wicked man. Strengthen my own curse. But after all this. 
My heart still races with each step he takes away from me. Aching. Bleeding. I want to beg him to stay, to yell at him and order him to stay safe, but I cannot. Why does he insist? Can't he see that I... that someone is worrying about him? That someone cares? Slowly slipping away from my grasp. I'm unable to be there. For him. <sighs> I suppose it is time to carry this fella. I did this to him after all. I am wicked in more ways than one. But my eyes. Or what is left of them can't seem to look away from him. From Finn. This yearning in my beating heart. Seeing his sweet, gentle smile. His voice like honey to my ears. The way he greets me. The way he bids his goodbye. Why must you leave all by yourself? Be still, oh my wicked heart. Conflicted and with a heavy heart, the guard forces his gaze upon the grey clouds above. They loom over the horizon, whispering promises of impending disaster. Slowly, steadily, surely, while finding solace in the darkest of nights, discovering warmth in the heart of the coldest of nights. He sighs, easier said than done. But oh, how I crave for, for, sigh, a smile. It is reaching for the starlit night sky, lighting up the dark of night. Like a beacon of hope in an otherwise cold and empty world, devoid of colour. They go unappreciated, their existence taken for granted. Until the storm comes, hiding them from view. Cloaking the world in lonely darkness. Oh, how my heart yearns for that starlit sky. The guard sighs as he looks in the direction Finn went. Oh, just like him. The brightest star to my moon. An eye on the dark side of my own moon. The guard sighs once more. Oh, my star. The guard picks the unconscious drunkard up, hoisting him over his shoulder. He takes one last look in the direction Finn went, before turning around and making his way to the city, towards a far too familiar jail cell. All's left to do is the work of the wicked. When the guard reaches the cell, he gently settles the sleeping man down on the thin straw mat covering the floor. My mind still wanders, even though I know it should not. Another sigh escapes his lips, all too common today. Why do I still think about him? His warm eyes, his cute face. Sigh. And that damn smile of his. How it breaks my heart every time I see it. And a damn smile. Perhaps. Perhaps I should check on him. Make sure that he's safe. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Rain is slowly falling. A soft entrance to what is sure to be a grand storm, covering the skies like an uncontrollable beast tearing through the clouds. But life is not waiting for the storm to pass, is it? 
is going out into the rain, see what might happen, what might appear when everyone else is hiding. Maybe I could do that and find out why I am as I am. He sighs softly. I should not. Those romantic dreams will never become reality. Maybe it is time to find a wife and follow my roots. Carry on the family line. One cannot do that with my wicked thoughts. But I must. I must. Must I not? Uh, the rain is picking up already? I should hurry home. Maybe you should have stayed in the city after all. Uh, and then, then maybe, just maybe, would I have been able to face him and stay with him? No. To face myself. To face those eyes. Those sad, sad eyes. Maybe one day. Another crack of lightning. I should hurry. I wonder if he's alright. As the storm picks up, Finn picks up his pace. Continuing onward. Why didn't I not stay with him? Is keeping my home safe really that important? It is the one thing I have left, after all. It's what's always there. Consistent. Just like the sun rising in the morning. Or setting in the evening. What makes my routine, my world? Waking up, working at the farm. Or heading to the city. And seeing him at the gate. Seeing those eyes. Those sad eyes. The storm is picking up with every step I take. I hope the fit things are all right. Why does my heart race every step I take? The further I go, it's as if time speeds up. He, he is nothing but trouble. Most of us are bitter over someone. But why am I bitter over him? Maybe because he sets my heart on fire, reminding me of who I used to be. Or who I want to be. There he is, in the distance. Do I call out for him? No, I cannot. But... Finn hears a sound behind him and turns to look. It's steadfast. Steadfast? Why is he... Why did he come? Does he not need to stay in the city and keep it safe from the storm? Finn, you... You need to come back. Stedras is catching his breath as they speak. Did he run all the way here? Finn stops for a second looks closely at the panting man in front of him. Here it is. That familiar look on his face. That sad, piercing gaze of his. I can't. I need to... Please! I need to go. I need to keep my home safe. Uh, it's the only thing I have left. There's nothing for me in the city. At least I have my home, even if anything else has crumbled around me. There is something. Finn raises an eyebrow. This is not like the steadfast he knows. You have me... You have... Oil. You have him. 
Will. What does he mean? Who does he mean? Who is Will? It's... I will. A wicked man who's taken a new name. Is this what he meant? William? Is that who you are? Is that your true name? It is. It was. <sighs> Will. A wicked man with wicked thoughts. That is what they call me. I. Will was punished for those thoughts. Thinking about someone else. Someone like... Someone like you. The look was all it took to be punished. A single glance. Will didn't love him. Will didn't want him. Will just thought it. And when asked, spoke the truth. With only one eye, I can only focus on one task. One goal. To keep the city safe. With a new name, there is no wicked past. Therefore, I am steadfast, not Will. Will died. Ah. But he still loves. I... He loves you, Finn. Will. I... I feel it too, Will. I... I... I like you too. But... I can't, Will. I... I can't. I need to go, Will. I need to keep my home safe. It's all I have left of them. Of my family. Come with me. They will kill us. They will kill you, Finn. I won't let that happen. I will die a lonely death for I let them take you like they took Will. Be safe, Finn. I will return to the city, and I will keep guard, and this time, maybe I can smile when I see you, like you deserve. I don't... I don't want this. Please come with me, Mr. I will. I cannot. I will not. Though my heart wants, my head knows to keep you safe. Will turns around and leaves Finn on the path to the farm. He then slowly starts making his way back to the city. His steps feeling heavier than ever as if the entire world is weighing him down. I cannot say it to you, Finn. But please know, I leave my will with you. I will be steadfast for you. Finn watches in silence. His will turns around and slowly starts making his way back to the city. Back to steadfast. Even will behind. I, my heart yells, my muscles strain. My entire body is telling me to turn back once more. But my head knows not to. Did he 
he see my tears? What does the rain drown them out? My heart yells at him, and she yells at me as well. To go to him. To go to Finn. They would kill us. They would kill him. I... I cannot. Finn. Stedvar swears under his breath. A damn smile. His entire damn face. He knows what he does to me now. How he breaks my heart every day. But that's how it needs to be. Is it not? But... Why does he not know? Why does he not understand? That I care for him? Why does he not choose me over his home? No, that's not fair. I can't ask that of him. My life is built upon a mountain of mistakes. He can't break them down for me. They are too many. I can imagine it though, what he would say. And how about we build our castle up upon that mountain instead? We can hide far from the world. A pop on our mountain. No, I can't tell him that. How oh, I wish it was realistic, but it is not. I wish I could hide with him in the mountains. Or swim with him in the river. Into the ocean that is his warm embrace. The silhouette of a figure stands out in the flash of light. Will readies himself putting his hand on his sword. Who goes there? A terrible night, ain't it? I am Robert. A hunter. Although I've been making my way to the city. And you should too, steadfast. A terrible night indeed. No need to be out in this storm. Nobody should be. Damn. Why can't I stop thinking about him? He'll be home soon, where he needs to be. Away from me. From my wicked being. Yeah, especially not with the bandits. Bandits? Oh, where at? I'm surprised you didn't see him. Right the way you came from. Stedvaz gets a dark look on his face. Oh, stay safe, Robert. Without another word, Will turns around. Starts running back in the direction he came from. Towards Finn. Someone cares. I care. You have me, Finn. Why can't I just tell him before? Please, be safe. I beg of you, wicked body of mine. Move faster. Break your limits and make it in time. There he is. Once more. Oh, safe. Damn it! Finn! Will? Finn turns around, just in time to notice the bandit leaping at him. Feels like time slows down as the bandit reaches Finn and puts a dagger to his throat. Will has seen this far too many times before and stops dead in his tracks. Silence falls for a few seconds as the bandit's companions reveal themselves. Four of them? Only one has gone after Finn. Yeah, Dad, you're gonna live. I don't think of value. The bandit tightens his grip on Finn's arm and holds his weapon firmly towards Finn's throat. You sure about that? You're pretty. You'll fetch a fair price. You try to run, I'll just sell your corpse. He pulls Finn back, away from Will. The other bandits closing in on Will. They had to fight me all at once then? 
I need to stay calm until Finn can get away. And then I'll make my escape as well. And get to him. Get to Finn. Your home is this way, isn't it, scum? Let's visit. My hands are itching for some action. Going to the farm? You... Bandit! Let him go! You don't really have a say in this, do you? I swear this upon my heart. If you hurt him, I will tear your heart out and crush it with my own hands. I will chase you to the hells if I have to. That's yeah, cute. You fucking queers. The bandit moves his knife from Finn's throat for a second, turns it around and jabs the handle to Finn's stomach. Finn falls down, clutching his stomach. I didn't hit you that hard. Get up. The bandit bends over to grab him. Finn kicks him in the knee. Finn gets up, then turns around and starts running down the road away from the bandits. And away from Will. Finn! I'll come for you! Before Will can move the bandits are upon him. Be safe, Will. I need to get away. Maybe then, once this is all over, I can convince you that the world has changed. And we can try. Try being together. I'll write poems for you. I'll make you smile. I'll wipe your tears and make you happy. I'll get rid of your sad, sad eyes. The crack of someone stepping on the twig reaches Finn's ears. Do I hide or do I run? Do I try to fight? Could I fight? Could I be like him? I have to try. Finn pulls out a slingshot from his satchel. It's not much a weapon, but it's what I have. If it can be used against the wild animals, it can be used as a weapon. Turns around and sees the bandit. They both stop a distance from each other. It's hard to give up, have you? Good, maybe I won't mess you up too bad. No use for damaged goods. What's your plan here? You catch me, sell me off as a slave? Do you think nobody will come for you? I need to distract him. As helpful as it sounds, I think my best bet is to fight as I can until, st until Will arrives. I'm sure he'll come. Right? I need to fight. If I can. Finn steals himself and readies his slingshot. It feels futile. It is what I have. The bandit laughs. This your last stand? Your heroic exit? Lay down the weapon, bitch. I need to buy time. You're right. Futiles it may or may not be what you expect. Am I to give up and then what? Am I to live my life for others? I think not. Instead, futile as it may be. Finn takes a shot. It hits the bandit square in the forehead. The bandit raises his hand to his head. You're dead. In a few swift steps, the bandit makes his way right over the Finn and grabs his arm. Finn tries to run, but he's no fighter. As the bandit grabs him, Finn notes his will approaching. Will, get away! Release him! The two words seem to have an effect on the bandit. Aye, I will! Right after you, fuck off! Will steps closer, one slow step at a time. He gets with a few steps of Finn and the bandit. Ever? Yeah, I'll let you have him. The bandit pushes Finn forward, right towards Will. 
or cannot stop himself and catch his fin with one of his arms, steadying his sword with the other. The bandit falls down, flat on his back, Will's sword sticking out of his abdomen, his eyes blank. Finn? Finn! Finn's expression is blank, his eyes unfocused. There is a red line across his neck. Don't, don't leave me, Finn. I just found you. And you just found Will. You just found me. I love you, Finn. I can't hear him. It's those sad eyes again. Don't cry. I'll be all right. I promise. I can't bear it. My heart screams. Those eyes. Those sad, sad eyes. Don't be sad, Will. I'll save you. I'll take your pain and wipe your tears. I want to make you happy. Finn never got to see steadfast smile in the end. His words never reached him. Finn was not a bad man, not to anyone, and his feelings were not wicked. They were just true, who he was. Maybe in another life things would have been different, and they'd have had their happy ever after. Times change and the world will get better. Progress is built on the suffering of those who came before us. Life is not fair and people are worse. We don't get to pick our circumstances and we don't get to pick our past. But this is not life. This is a story and I am the storyteller. Now what? We usually don't get to change the past. But sometimes, just sometimes, we can write our own stories. Let's go back, you and I. Let's see their story unfold differently this time. Where there is a will, there is a way. Finn hears a sound behind him and turns to look. Steadfast? Steadfast? Why is he... Why did he come? Does he not need to stay in the city and keep it safe in the storm? Finn, you... You need to come back. Steadfast is catching his breath as they speak. Did he run all the way here? Finn stops for a second, looks closely at the panting man in front of him. There it is, that familiar look on his face. That sad, piercing gaze of his. I can't, I need to... Please! I need to go, I need to keep my home safe. It's the only thing I have left. There's nothing for me in the city, at least I have my home. Even anything else has crumbled around me. There is something. Finn raises an eyebrow. This is not like the steadfast he knows. You have me. You have Will. You have him. Will? What does he mean? Who does he mean? Who is Will? It's... I'm Will. The wicked man who has taken a new name. Is this what he meant? William, is that who you are? Is that your true name? It is. It was. 
will. A wicked man with wicked thoughts. That is what they call me. I will was punished for those thoughts. For thinking about someone else. Someone like someone like you. A look was all it took to be punished. A single glance. Will didn't love him. Will didn't want him. Will just thought it. But when I spoke the truth. With only one eye, I can only focus on one task, one goal. To keep the city safe. With a new name, there is no wicked past. Therefore, I am steadfast, not Will. Will died. Mm. But he still loves. This time, let him know, Will. Let him know before it's too late. He... Oh, I love you, Finn. Sister... Will. I... I love you too, Will. But... I can't go with you, Will. I... I can't. I need to go, Will. I need to keep my home safe. It's all I have left of them. My family. Come with me. They will kill us. They will kill you, Finn. I won't let that happen. I'll die a lonely death for I let them take you like they took Will. Will. The perfect life may not exist in this rotten world. But does that mean we shouldn't try? I still want to try, Will. What I want, what you want. If it is the same thing, I don't care what the world thinks. I, w I want it. Oh, it's so bad my soul cries out in pain every time you... Every time I see that damn smile of yours. Every time I see you, Finn, I can feel it. My heart cries out. It wants you. It yearns. It beats so hard it feels like my chest is tearing apart. I want for love. What I'm left with is pain, endless suffering. What I want cannot be mine. The world will not allow it. What if we try? What if they come for us? You want me to cut them all down? Even if they were beasts, I would fight them a thousand times. I would fight the very armies of hell to be with you. Be with someone I love. But people are worse. I've had enough blood on my hands. I don't want to hurt anyone. I don't think the world still is like that. Can't you see that you've waited for long enough, Will? Time moves forward and the world has changed. People change. I never needed to become someone else like you did. It's time to learn how to love again. How to live again, Will. How many times, how many times have I had these feels, these thoughts? Too afraid to approach. Too afraid to find out what I want. What can happen? The possibilities and the dangers. And now I'd still trade them all, all those moments of holding back, just for a ki just to be with you. Finn. A 
Well, I'll come with you. Let's keep your home safe. Will pulls Finn to a quick hug before they start making their way onwards towards the farm. As they move into the darkness, there's a crack of lightning. A figure in the middle of the road. The figure slowly comes into view. Do I, yeah? Figure you'd be alone, like always, farmer boy. The bandit's companions slowly appear from over the forest. Yeah, the big guy, I'll catch up free. The bandit motions to Finn. There are four of them. They seem to be targeting Finn. Will guides Finn to move behind him and then gets between Finn and the bandits. Well, stay behind me. And as you see the chance, run. Are you sure about getting our way? Yeah, I'll treat him as he needs. So long as he behaves. The bandits move in towards the pair. Finn, they will come at us all at once. Stay behind me if things go bad, or leave me behind. Well, you were right, Will. I have to, don't I? I need to stay calm until Finn can get away. And then I'll make my escape as well. You. Bandit. Are you willing to pay the price for your actions? Leave now and I'll let you live. You intend to continue to go after someone I care for? I'll rip your heart out and crush it in this fist of mine. Will holds his fist up, showing it to the bandit. Yeah, it's cute. Yeah, fuck it. <sighs> Last chance. Leave now and I'll let you live. The bandit laughs. Well, you have any say in this? Kill a big one. Capture the farmer. Another flash of lightning in the night and the bandits start to close in. I need to keep him safe. I will keep him safe. I have not come this far and finally reached him to have him taken away from me. As Will steals himself, the bandits come upon him in the night. Two bandits strike first, both at once. Will parries one of them with his sword and aims a punch at the other bandit. The first bandit backs off as he's parried. The one Will struck with his fist lunges in. A familiar pain at his side. Ah, oh, too deep. I can manage. As if time moves in slow motion. Is this what it feels like to fight for your own cause? For someone you love? He clutches his hand to his side. I overacted and might get an opening on one of them. Will glances back at Finn, who's pulled out his dagger and is readying himself. Finn is no fighter. I cannot let them get to him. He would stand no chance on his own. Once more. Next, the third bandit goes at Will seemingly on his own. He lunges as if to stab him with his sword. Will dodges the side and grabs the bandit's shoulder with his free hand. With his other, he pushes his sword into the bandit's back and out his chest. And the body to add to the pile of my sins. An arrow lands in his shoulder. I got careless. But that's one down, three to go until... Until Finn is safe. Ignore the pain and fight for what you want to fight for, Will. He pulls his sword out of the bandit's back and pushes a lifeless body to the ground with his foot. Yeah, I regret that. The bandit in the back who seems to be the leader is the one with the bow. At least he wants Finn alive. That gives me some room to manoeuvre. The two bandits who struck first strike once again in tandem. 
Once again, Will parries the first one with his sword. The other one will be coming from the side now. Time is still in slow motion. Will starts to turn around to parry the second bandit. A familiar warm feeling starts spreading from the top of his back downwards. Will finishes his motion. A surprised look on the bandit's face tells him the bandit not expect Will to still be stand. A swift strike and the bandit lies on the ground, a blank stare in his eyes. <coughs> Taste of blood in my mouth. Is this how it ends? Wicked body of mine, I have but one request. Stay standing until Finn is safe. As Will looks up, he sees the bandit in the back knock an arrow. Hey, sure you want to dodge this one? As Will follows the bandit's eyes, he sees him take aim at Finn. Damn. Damn that smile of his. With the bandit releases the string and then fires the arrow, Will does not move. The arrow hits him in the chest. I will take you with me. The gates of hell. I will deliver you myself to whatever judgment is waiting for us. The closer bandit lunges at Will who parries him with his sword for the third time. Will then gets in close and grabs him. Letting go of his sword. And move his hand to the bandit's head in a quick twist. One more, just one more. And Finn will be safe. Before Will can get his bear with the final bandage the pony with weapon in hand. Close combat this time? There's the blood loss, or maybe I've gotten old. As if my body won't move fast enough. As the bandit strikes, Will barely manages to catch the bandit's sword hand in his. They struggle for the sword, and Will catches the bandit's other hand with his free hand. <coughs> I don't think I can win this one. At least maybe Finn can get away, safely. Finn! R run! As if time stops, when Will notices the dagger sticking out from the bandit's neck. Finn's dagger. The grunt Will releases the bandit and falls down on his knees. So in slow motion he falls down on his back. The only thing in his vision is the rain and... Despite my vision fading, I can see it so clearly. Oh, his face. Finn's precious face. Oh, don't worry, Finn. I won't let anyone hurt you. Damn. I can't hear him. Oh, don't cry, Finn. Smile. Smile, that beautiful smile of yours. The one I love. The you I love. Is this how it ends? Did I? Did I do the right thing? I did. I kept him safe. I kept Finn safe. It is what I wanted. Was I a good man? I think Will was. I was. Thank you for letting me build Will once more. And will you remember me, Finn? There it is. That smile. I love you, Finn.
Finn to get to see Steadfast smile this time. He got to see Will smile. And Will got to see Finn smile one last time. His words did reach him. And Will? You never were a wicked man. Despite what the world around you said or thought, you were your own person. You were kind and thoughtful of those who matter to you. In the end, that's what matters, is it not? Perhaps in the future the world will move on. And maybe in a different life you wouldn't have been seen as wicked. Would you and Finn have had a good life? I think so. But at least you got a good end. You were an honourable man. Despite the wicked world that shunned you for things outside of your control. Now, dear reader, this is the end. Was it a good end? I think so. But do you think so? We don't get to pick our end. We don't get to decide what happens. But then, once again, this is not life. It is a story. So this time, let's give them an ending without blood. There he is, in the distance. Do I call out for him? No, I cannot. But... Finn hears a sound behind him and turns to look. Steadfast? Steadfast? Why is he... Why did he come? Does he not need to stay in the city and keep it safe in the storm? Finn! You need to come back. Did he run all the way here? Finn stops for a second, looks closely at the panting man in front of him. There it is, that familiar look on his face. That sad, piercing gaze of his. I can't, I need to... Please! I need to go, I need to keep my home safe. It's the only thing I have left. There's nothing of me in the city. At least I have my home, even if everything else has crumbled around me. There is something. Finn raises an eyebrow. This is not like the steadfast he knows. You have me, Finn. You have Will. Will? Who is Will? What does he mean? Who does he mean? I'm Will. I mean, Will was my name. Will before the world decided I wasn't good enough. A wicked man who's taken a new name. Is this what you meant? Uh, a wicked man with wicked thoughts. That is what they called me. I was punished for those thoughts. For thinking about someone else. For thinking about someone like you. The luck was all it took to be punished. A single glance. I didn't love him. I didn't want him. I just thought it. And when asked, I spoke the truth. With only one eye, I can only focus on one task. One goal. To keep the city safe. With a new name, there is no wicked past. Therefore, I was told to be steadfast, not will. Will was supposed to die that day. Mm. But he still loves. I love you, Finn. You brought Will back. You brought me back. I love you too, Will. I want to keep my home safe. More than anything. But... I'll come with you, Will. Are you not afraid? Afraid of someone doing to us what they did to you? I've thought it a million times, Finn. It's no secret you're like me. 
At least I don't think so. Let us try, Finn. Let us see if the world has changed. And if not, I'll fight for you. I'll fight for us. Damn the world, if we have to live in a cabin out in the woods, then so be it. Even the hounds of hell come to get you, I'll stand between them and you. They will have to take me first. Steal your heart, Finn. We'll break the limits put upon us by others. Even we have to go on distant travels, the distant lands to be ourselves. I want it. I'll do anything for you, Finn. I'd watch paint dry with you, just to spend one more moment with you. With you, I think I can do it. Will walks up to Finn, standing closely behind him. Put his arms around him, pulling him into a hug. And slowly places his head on top of Finn's as he hugs him. A warm embrace. Last in for as long as they wanted. Finn wakes in an unfamiliar room. It takes him a few seconds to remember where he is. Will having left him his bed and taken the floor for himself. Mr. Will's house. His bed. It smells like him. And it feels like him. Warm and safe. Finn rests just a few minutes more, taken in his surroundings. The small room is plainly decorated, but neat and functional. Not to unlike his host. There's a ray of sunlight shining in through the window. Finn can't help but think back to that one thought he had just two days ago. The feeling steadfast had evoked in him, and now the feeling that Will had evoked in him. Comparing the two. They were the same person, but shining a ray of light on that which was once covered in darkness. Had revealed the hidden shapes and forms. And it was not harsh or unemotional, not even sad. It was loving and gentle. That one ray of sunlight shining in was not coming from the top of the well, was it, little frog? No, it was coming from the window. You were just looking out the wrong window. Finn sighs. There's been a lot of sighing for Finn these past few days. But this time, it is a happy sigh, one of satisfaction. Maybe things will turn out fine. In the future as well? Is there a happy ending after all? There is a knock on the door. Finn ponders if he should respond or not for a little bit. His pondering is cut short as the door is opened. In peeks Will, carefully, as not to disturb the potentially sleeping Finn. His ears perk up as he sees Finn awake. Good morning, Finn. Did you rest well? Finn can't help but smile. Uh, good morning. Finn's ears perk up. Is that the smell of breakfast? Well, what's that smell? Oh, bread. Uh, I made bre uh, breakfast. I made breakfast for you. Thank you. That might actually be the nicest thing anyone's ever done for me. Hey, Will? With that, Finn gets out of the bed and walks up to Will. He puts his hands on the larger man's chest, slowly pushing his fingers through the fur. I love you. I love you too, Finn. Will then wraps his arms around Finn and pulls him into a warm hug. Will puts his hand on Finn's chin, bringing his face up to look him in the eyes. And slowly his lips descend on Finn's. And that, dear reader, is the end. Stories by Grunt Steel and Drakes. Music by Camazool. Now, about the story. What actually happened out of all the possible endings? That is for you to decide. 
when a story is told, written or read, all the possibilities are created. Whatever happens is up to you to decide. Storyteller, writer or reader. What is the end, after all, if not the start of another story? After all, their characters still have stories to tell. Finn the Farmer William Steadfast the Guardsman Bandit, Bandit, the Bandit Thank you for listening. Have a good day, all of you. And you, Drakes and Gruntsteel. And all that's left for me to say is thanks, as always, to all my patrons. And my top patrons are Grizz, Evan King, David Taylor, Samuto, Brian Hall, Anubis Silverwind, Ida Corval, Brandon Bradford, Mastian, Mark Huskerton, Marcus, Kopi, Gunnamulla, Tiger Cub, Sindri Dragowulf, Dissonance, Besuksu, Cobras Vissa, Kartek, and Burnt Toast. There'll be more stuff coming up later in the year if we've only just started it. But until then, bye for now. <laughs>